Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Numbers chapter 27. The daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mela, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting, and said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers, who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Say to the Israelites, If a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan, so that he may possess it. This is to have the force of law for the Israelites, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go up this mountain in the Abarim range and see the land I have given the Israelites. After you've seen it, you too will be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was. For when the community rebelled at the waters of the desert of Zin, Both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and the entire assembly, and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so that the whole Israelite community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out, and at his command, they will come in. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord instructed through Moses. So after reading through this chapter, I want to recover and review just a couple of things. First, this incident with the daughters of Zelophehad. It's interesting that their father had died. It's mentioned that he died in the wilderness, not for any rebellion other than the general rebellion of grumbling and complaining. So we read in verse 1, the daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mela, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And so these ladies presented themselves in an orderly fashion with the request. Verse 3, they said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Now that's the problem, because uh, sons were to inherit the property of their fathers. Only the males were the lawful owners of land at that point in time. So this was a new situation. These ladies were coming and saying, 
Um, our father was the rightful heir of the land, but he's he's died. He has no sons. And so we girls are interested in the land. Why should we be left out? And so verse four, why should our father's name disappear from his clan because he had no son? Give us the property among our father's relatives. Now, this was a new request. So Moses wisely brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them the property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. So, friends, this was a huge, huge issue and a social modification where the Lord recognized the rights of the daughters to own and possess the property and to further the family name. And so it's uh, once again, the scriptures typically deal with the cultural situation as it is not attempting to modify cultural issues, but this was an issue that the Lord took the part of these girls and said, yeah, they ought to own the property. And so then the Lord gives a quick succession of of, uh, property rights, a listing of property rights. And then he speaks to Moses in verse 12. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, go up this mountain in the Abarim range and see the land that I've given the Israelites. After you've seen it, You too will be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was. And so the Lord mentions uh, this is because of the rebellion at the waters of the desert of Zin, the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, and the desert, and uh, where Aaron and Moses struck the rock as opposed to speaking to the rock. So the Lord told Moses he's going to to die. And uh, Moses immediately was concerned for the people of Israel. He didn't ask, Lord, please let me live. He didn't make personal request. This is the request he made. Verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, who will lead them and bring them in, so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Now, this was a noble request. Uh, Moses was about to die. His brother Aaron had been a leader. He was dead now. Uh, Miriam had been a leader. She was dead. And so Moses was concerned. Who's going to lead the people? Who's going to take care of the people? I've done that faithfully to the best of my ability for 40 years. Now we need someone else. And so the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hands on him. And friends, this laying out of hands... Uh, is more than a symbolic act. It involves an impartation of a measure of the grace and the spirit and the anointing that's been put on the person who is laying on the hands. And so for Moses to lay his hands on Joshua, uh, this involved a, a change of leadership and an impartation of divine enabling for Joshua to take the helm and to be able to lead the people. And so in verse 22, Moses did as the Lord commanded him, He took Joshua, had him stand before Eliezer the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord instructed through Moses. And so this public installation of Joshua as his successor was very important. And it was on the heart of Moses and on the heart of God. And uh, often ministries don't have successors when the principal party dies. Um, Recently, you may be aware that Reinhard Bonnke, the great evangelist who worked primarily in Africa, died. But some years before Bonnke died, the Lord spoke to him and said, "Um, you have a, a man working for the ministry who's to be your successor. And so the Lord named a young man named Daniel Kalinda at that time, who was, uh, I believe, as I recall, 28 years old at the time. And the Lord said, he's to be your successor. So Reinhard Bonnke wisely um, uh, went to the other leaders in the ministry and said, I feel like this is what the Lord is saying. And I'm sure they questioned him closely and said, you know, Brother Reinhardt, you have family members working for the ministry. Shouldn't one of them be successor, your successor? And he said, no, no, the Lord has shown me this young man, uh, Daniel Kalinda, is supposed to be my successor. So Reinhard Bonnke and the leaders of Christ for All Nations laid hands on Daniel Kalinda at age 28 And uh, he began to lead the ministry for some 10 years uh, before the death of Bonnke. But the point being, um, this impartation for the leadership and the person who's to be your successor, it's very important. And a lot of ministers and ministries neglect this. And to Moses' credit, 
He was very concerned about this, and the Lord agreed it was important and made provision for Joshua to be his successor. So, Lord, um, we just see these principles in Scripture. And um, I pray for myself and the church that I lead. May I have wisdom to impart to whoever's to be my successor in due season. Lord, show me who that's to be. And I pray for everyone involved in ministry that's listening to this message. Lord, may we all be cognizant of the fact that we don't live forever. And may we seek that person out who you have appointed to be our successor. Lord, the days of our flesh are finite and limited. But the days of your kingdom are unlimited up until the return of Jesus. We want your kingdom to continue. So God, give us grace to pass the baton in due season. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.